get a roll here, I guess. It's, um, time. <clears throat> yeah. Chris. Two minutes. Uh, so it's Monday, March 22nd, uh, 533. We'll call the meeting to order the joint uh, Republican Democratic Caucus. Uh, roll call. Um, Burke Girl, Paul Arena, Kevin McCarthy, Brad Lindmark, Joe Hoffman, Jim Webster, Gene Crosby, Keith McDonald, John Butita, Aaron Booker, Dave Kelly, Angela Fellers, Dave Tassoni, Fred Westcott, Jaime Salgado, Angie Goral, Steve Schultz, Dorothy Red. Have I missed anybody? Okay. <clears throat> um, so I think uh, I have a few things that we wanted to discuss. And since there was that conversation before the meeting began about um, how much we all enjoy Zoom, uh, Mr. Thompson had sent out an email today informing us that um, the boardroom would be ready April 8th, I think he said. They're doing an AV project in there. Um, so after that, I guess we have access to the boardroom again. Um, they are not, they have not put up, nor do they want to put up partitions between the, the seats. Um, are any members of the board who wanted to get vaccinated not been vaccinated yet? Bert, did you see that email from HR about getting a vaccine? I did, and I did register today, so I'm just waiting to hear back exactly when, whether it's this Friday or when, I'm not sure, but I am registered, yes. Okay. This um, is Steve. I am not vaccinated yet, but I registered today. Okay. So I asked uh, Mr. Thompson if there would be option for, you know, uh, Zoom and uh, in person for anyone who's you know, either not vaccinated or just uncomfortable. Um, I guess kind of by a show of hands or how many people would, would want sometime in April to begin um, meeting in person again? I do, Ms. Fred. Okay. I see kind of a mix. Um, <clears throat> All right, so we got about half and half. Okay. Um, is there anybody who, so I, I think what's gonna end up happening if I understand correctly is we're permitted to meet by Zoom until the governor says otherwise. So I don't think that, um, I, I don't think we can make people meet in person. Mr. Butita, did you have something to add? Uh, well, yeah, just about the, the Zoom part of it. I, I assume we're going to probably be able to run a hybrid type of system for a time being. But at some point in time, uh, we'll, we'll be meeting in person, I'm sure. What, the, what that date is, I don't know. But I would suggest that uh, we keep the Zoom format uh, in place, at least uh, for the committee meetings, because uh, this is a, a vehicle for all the residents uh, to watch uh, where they didn't have that ability in the past, to watch committee meetings. It also gives uh, myself uh, the opportunity instead of running downtown all the time to catch every meeting, I can watch every committee meeting. Uh, if not live, I can catch it later on YouTube. So um, I would su suggest that you know, we continue the Zoom going forward, even when we do start meeting in person. I think there's a lot of benefit to ourselves and to the uh, our residents. So <clears throat> still meet in person, but have it broadcast using Zoom is what you're Correct, saying. Correct, yeah. Okay, yeah, that that seems to make sense to me. I, I don't know what the technology is with um, having the blended meeting, uh, but I guess um, our, I'm not sure what our April uh, meeting schedule is in terms of the board meeting. We're meeting on the 25th. Chairman Chiarelli, do you know when we meet in April? Yeah, uh, April 8th. April 8th. Oh, so on that day, okay. Yes. So um, would you, would, 
Some of you like to have the option of meeting in person for that meeting. Say we don't do April 8th, but we do the following one in April and then let people who aren't fully vaccinated still participate by Zoom and go from there. Does that seem like a good plan? Or does anybody object to that plan, I should say? I would prefer that we lead by example and stay um, by Zoom for as long as what the governor would allow. Um, I had mentioned this in a committee meeting this week. You know, I'm the mother of three young children. I know Mr. Neighbors has young children, as does Mr. Billich and Mr. Salgado. I know several other members have young grandchildren. Um, and the majority of our board is of a demographic that is at high risk uh, for complications post COVID. Um, I believe that we should lead by example and that we should stay as safe as possible and as socially distanced as possible and until the governor's order lifts. Um, thank you, Ms. Fowlers. But um, I mean, I, I have family members who are very concerned, but I, I will be fully vaccinated in, in April. And you know, those of us that are vaccinated, I don't think we have to worry about. I believe it takes a couple of weeks after you're vaccinated before you should actually co-mingle with others. And right. there's and there's there's still um, comment you know commentary about how people who are vaccinated can still be carriers and still be at risk. Um, even though they they will likely not get sick themselves, they can still carry it to other people. Correct. So Ms. Fellers, you, you wouldn't object to a blended meeting, right? Where you could continue to participate by Zoom and those that want to be in person can be in person, right? Um, I, I don't object to the to whatever the majority of the board would decide um, as long as I have the option to continue to uh, appear by Zoom myself. Um, you know, our, our county, you know, being that we're part-time employees, um, you know, I don't think that we should require anyone go into a situation that's potentially unsafe um, without even the mitigating factor of like health insurance or something like, like that. Um, we, we, as long as there's a, an option to attend that is legal, um, I'm okay with that. All right, I mean, I'm fine with that. Ms. Crosby, you're on mute. Yeah, thank you, uh, Chairman. I think um, that there's enough resistance um, to meeting live for several board members, if it's a mix and 50-50, I look at a blended meeting from the chair, uh, Chairman Shirelli's point of view, and that'll be a very difficult meeting to run via Zoom and via live, because your eyes have to be in two places at all times. And that's not gonna be an easy meeting to, to manage. So um, until everybody's comfortable, I just think there's enough resistance in order to maintain the Zoom until um, we're you know, over the hurdle of all this. I personally, I'm comfortable with meeting in person, but I don't think everyone is on that page, Paul. And I think we just wanna make sure that you know, everybody's covered. And I personally wouldn't wanna run a Zoom meeting and a live meeting simultaneously for all the tea in China. That will not be an easy meeting to run. Thank you, Ms. Crosby. Um, I did see um, quite a few hands of people who wanted to meet in person. So just trying what to- What was balance. the count? Did, did, uh, you, did, you, did you count? I didn't, but we will. Um, let me just real quick ask Chairman Shirelli, um, your, do you have a preference of in-person or, or Zoom or blended? It, you know, I, the, the issue has been raised about your difficulty in managing a, a blended meeting. Do you have any opinion? Ms. Crosby is absolutely correct. It is more difficult, but I've been in constant communication with the city because they went back to live and offered the Zoom opportunity also for about a month now. And they meet every week. It is challenging, but it does give the option for people who have concerns not to show up that they can still participate. So at some point in time, and I think it's a valid argument when everybody has been vaccinated for two weeks have passed, um, I don't know how long we have to wait beyond that point uh, to get in a formal setting. But as long as the governor allows the option of in-person and hybrid on Zoom, 
it's totally up to this county board. Um, you know, if they decide to go back and it's a challenge for me, I'll, I'll meet the challenge as long as everybody understands that it is more difficult. But, uh, you know, I'm here at the, to serve the county board. And, you know, I see what the city council is doing and they're managing it. And so I will manage it also on my end. So I appreciate it, Ms. Crosby, the concern on that. But I want to make sure that, you know, we're productive in our meetings and, you um, you know, whatever the will of the county board is, you know, we have that option and it's totally up to everybody here. Um, so, and like I said, the council has been in session for about a month now with the hybrid, you know, offering the Zoom as an alternative if you do not choose to attend. Okay. Um, Mr. Kelly. Thank you, Chairman. I, I, I think it'll work out fine. Uh, it's been working out fine with just Zoom exclusively. And like Chairman Shirelli said, I think it'll work out fine with the hybrid. So when I was on council and when they had, you know, shut down the live sessions, then they went back into hybrid. As a chairman of the Codes and Rights Committee, all I could hear was the voice so when I was going through committees, I would call a roll call and everyone would have the opportunity to speak, but I could not see them on Zoom. Like I see everybody here. I could only hear them when they were wanted to speak. So I'm not sure how the technology with our, with Gus is and how they plan on doing that, but I know it is an option for us to be you know, hybrid. Mr. Arena. Um. Okay, uh, before I come back to Ms. Fellers, I got a few first times, Mr. Lindmark and then Mr. McDonald and then back to Ms. Fellers. Mr. Lindmark, go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. I am not vaccinated, nor do I plan on getting vaccinated. Uh, reason is for uh, medical reasons, I'm allergic to bee stings. And how does that affect my ability to meet live? Is um, that going to compromise it? I, uh, I mean, that I think that's a per personal decision from my perspective for you. We will continue to have uh, Zoom as an option, I believe. Um, yeah, but I mean, if I want to meet live, is, is that a problem? I don't, I mean, if I'm vaccinated, it doesn't, it's for, I think if a person is vaccinated themselves, they, you're not exposing them to any risk okay. other than, you know, they suggest that someone who's unvaccinated could get the virus and it could mutate into something that the vaccine, the vaccine <clears throat> doesn't affect. I, I think that's too rare a chance for me to be concerned about it. Others may, but. but uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could, I'll sure. just add at the city council and the committee meetings when it's hybrid, every member has to wear their mask when they're not speaking. There was separation involved there was and the general public had separation between them um, so i mean there's there's opportunities to you know stay safe we have to follow those opportunities um, you know at some point in time as things open up further and further and more vaccine and herd immunity occurs you know just like when mr limbark you know you're going to have to wear your mask when you're there unless you're speaking um, and I think that's to protect everyone and yourself. Um, so I think, you know, the option, again, it's up to the county board. You have the opportunity to go back live in session with the hybrid, uh, with the Zoom. I don't think it's a state statute or anything coming out of the attorney general's office that you have to be vaccinated to go back in public at public settings and public meetings. So I appreciate that concern or that question, but Mm. Again, you, you have the destiny of the county board creates their own destiny of how they want to meet and if the opportunity is there to be hybrid. Like I said, I will, I will adapt to how the county board wants me to run a meeting. Thank you. Did you have any follow up, Mr. Lindmark? Um, no, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure I'd still have the ability to meet live just because I wasn't um, vaccinated. I think we need to get back to as normal as possible while remaining safe, uh, get things back rolling, including the economy. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McDonald. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Our meetings prior to, to the pandemic, they were broadcast on YouTube and, and, and showed for the world to see. Um, I think a combination of, of that and the projector screen, instead of having our agenda, we could stream the YouTube, the, the YouTube stream, maybe not have audio from it, the, but the, either Chairman Shrelly or one of us board members present could point out to Chairman Shrelly that, hey, you know, uh, Mr. BT has got his hand up, Chairman, in case you hadn't noticed, uh, much in the same way we do here right now. We all have microphones in front of ourselves at the county board chambers. I think it should be a pretty easy thing. I respect everybody's decision to go or stay, and I look forward to meeting him in person again. Okay, thank you. Ms. Fellers? I just wanted to clarify that I look forward to meeting in person again as well. Um, this, you know, I, I want all of it, everything to get back to normal as well. I just want us to be safe and to, um, and to take our time to, and to do it right. Um, my question would be for those who are anxious to get back into the boardroom, is, is there a, an advantage to getting back into the boardroom? Is it simply um, a motivation of a return to normalcy or is there um, a procedural advantage to us being in the same room versus being on Zoom? Um, I don't know. <clears throat> it, in terms of board meeting, Chairman Shirelli, Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I, I don't want to consume your time, but procedurally, because of the pandemic and not meeting live, we have to have a roll call for every vote. And I think that will change when you're in session live. Um, if whoever's on Zoom, we'll still have to ask them to vote yes or no in, in their own setting. But as you recall, when you're live in session, most of the time you don't have to take a roll call vote. So that takes a lot of energy on the Lori Gumhouse part and my part. Right now, I can only see six of you on my screen. So without raising your hand or verbally saying anything, it's very difficult. Because um, that's all I can see on this screen, six you know, county board yes. members. Mr. Arena. Thank you. Uh, one second, Ms. Goral. Ms. Fowler's was your question answered? Um, yes, by Mr. Shirley, as, as far as procedural, I, I was just curious um, as to the others that uh, are excited or are very much um, in favor of getting into session sooner rather than later, um, what, what their motivation was. What, um, those of us that are uh, proponents for staying on Zoom, um, it, it's because of health and safety reasons. And I wanted to know if there was a specific reason why people wanted to get back into the room. My answer, answer is Mr. Westcott, go ahead, and then we'll go to Ms. Goral. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, I have very poor internet, and uh, I have to go all the way across town every meeting, and uh, it's very inconvenient for me to do it, so that's why I want to go back to the board. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Westcott. Ms. Goral, and then Mr. We uh, Booker. My only concern is like with Mr. Lindmark, he's very acceptable to this and we will have a live audience. Once we opened up the boardroom, we will then have the public be walking in and out. They will sit close to you, behind you. And those are the things that I have to take in consideration is perhaps your health, Mr. Lindmark. As long as it's us together, like we are right now, we don't have a problem even if we were in a room like a committee meeting and there's no one that's actually present from the outside. I don't have a problem with that. But when I know the public is walking in there and probably half of them won't be vaccinated, that's when I worry about your health more than mine. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Carl. Mr. Booker, then Mr. Lindmark. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, the advantage that I see of uh, uh, meeting in person are uh, well, number one, they're called meetings, and that's why we gather for meetings. Uh, uh, there aren't any technical difficulties, such as uh, uh, difficulty in uh, uh, internet. Um, sometimes uh, somebody's uh, trying to speak and their voice is warbled uh, due to, again, internet. But uh, handouts, correspondence, uh, written things that, that are on our desks every time we go into uh, a county board meeting. Um, you know, I keep those things in file. And... Uh, um, it, it just seems that we're more productive. We, we get more interpersonal uh, relationships amongst board members discussing things uh, off on the side. Um, but uh, yeah, those are the advantages I see. And if we can fly uh, 
uh, fly seated side by side on, uh, on airlines uh, wearing a mask, I, I, I believe that uh, uh, it's time for us to uh, uh, meet in person in meetings where we're not sitting so close together. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Booker. Mr. Lindmark, you had a comment? Yeah, thank you for your concern on my health, Mr. Skorl. I appreciate that. Um, I did have the virus in early August and I was uh, quarantined. All I really had out of it was just um, mild symptoms, tired, didn't even really feel that bad. It was not a big deal for me. I know it affects everyone differently. It's very serious to some, but as long as we're wearing our masks and keeping the uh, newest guidelines they're giving us, I think that we're safe to do that. Although I also respect everyone's opinion on whether they want to stay home or meet live. I'm not, however everybody thinks is fine with me, but I just think we need to get back to live as long as we follow the guidelines. But if somebody doesn't want to, that's great. Stay home, whatever's best for you. I respect everybody's opinion on this pandemic. Thanks. Paul, well, this is Joe. Right? Yes, go ahead, Mr. Hoffman. Uh, I got to say, I, I for once agree with Mr. Booker about a lot of the stuff he said. I do think the meetings flow a lot better when we're live. I do think a lot of people have their hand up and don't get seen for a number of reasons. Uh, so I agree with all the things that I think the meetings would be better for live. I also still want to say, do we really have to sit side by side? Can't we use the back of the uh, committee room and spread out? And if there's visitors like Ms. Squirrel was bringing up, can't they, visit, can't they go to another room and see that over uh, TV or however they did it back other times? So I, I still think we need to spread out, but I do agree it would be nice to get back live. Um, yeah, I'm not sure about not having visitors in the room. I, I think that'd be a question for Mr. Thompson and the state's attorney's office. Because does the Open Meetings Act somehow come to play then if we ask visitors to, to watch by video if we're meeting live? I, I don't know. Well, they, they have before in the past. They, when the room was so full, they actually uh, had another room open for them to watch. <clears throat> right, I recall that I was there for one of those meetings. So, they, yeah, I do remember that. It can also be, Joe, that as long as they're six feet apart, whatever overflow we get, then can go to another room and watch television. That might work too. Right. I, I still think we can social distance, at least for a while. All right. Well, uh, <clears throat> we don't have to do this on April 8th, right? We can continue this conversation. People can interact with Mr. Thompson, Chairman Shirelli over the next two weeks on their ideas, what they feel comfortable with. Maybe we'll revisit this at our next caucus and see if we can make a, a firm decision. Does that sound like a reasonable plan to everyone or? Yes, it does. Does the meeting. We'll set a target potentially for that second meeting in April, which what would be the 22nd, right? if we're meeting on the 8th. So, so let's do that. We'll move on from this topic then. Um, <clears throat> since we're already talking about the other stuff, not the agenda, two other things I wanna mention to you. Um, <clears throat> at our meetings that we have, we have bi-monthly meetings with chairman and with uh, Mr. Thompson, Mr. Hoffman, myself, Mr. Rickert, just talking about <clears throat> what we're doing and what's coming up. We had a conversation about the discussion that happened at the last board's meeting, board meeting um, over the, uh, the vehicles for the animal services. And I think um, that was a good conversation. A lot of good points were brought, not brought up, but um, I was on, I'm on the finance committee. And uh, when uh, the questions started to come up, I was thinking, well, these are good questions. You know, I wish, we had thought of them in finance. Um, and I know that there was um, a motion made to uh, suspend the rules that night uh, because uh, Mr. Frazier was there with us. And um, we as a board over my two years here have um, suspended the rules frequently. 
Um, so in, in our discussion about it, the comparison was made to the Rockford City Council, which is, you know, obviously Mr. Shirelli's experience, where they tend to wait on a lot of stuff. They'll lay stuff over, they keep stuff in committee. And <clears throat> the, the message, I guess, that we wanted to convey to the board is um, it would be better if a conversation that, that that type of conversation that took place about the animal service services vehicle took place in committee. Because um, there was a lot of detail to it. Mr. Frazier wasn't prepared with a lot of the questions. Um, or, so that would be the, the, the best alternative. If, if we had thought of those questions in committee and it had been um, addressed there, but by our rules, that issue could should have laid over. Um, so I think what we all, what, what the ask was from the administration is that we um, don't rush to do things unless there's a reason to. So unless we actually really need to, to suspend the rules because something is urgent, um, let's not, let's defer to waiting. And then if, um, if as a conversation develops on the board floor, if it appears that it's, um, it needs more work, more education of the members, uh, there's nothing wrong with laying stuff over or sending it back to committee for the conversation to happen there more in depth. Um, it's just, it, it's cleaner for the board meeting and it's, uh, better for the members in general, members of this board, to, uh, to have an opportunity to be fully educated. <clears throat> I thought a lot of points came up in that conversation that were very valid, that um, you know, maybe given more time, we might've done it slightly different. I don't know, but um, that was asked of Mr. Hoffman and I to relay to the board that, um, you know, let's try to take it slowly and um, not, not suspend the rules unless we absolutely need to. I know, Chairman Chiarelli, is there anything you'd like to add? Well, thank you, Chairman. You're absolutely right. I mean, there was a, a tone on the city council and the committee meetings that if something wasn't ready for prime time, it was just automatically laid over. Um, and I think that's prudent coming from the side of being an alderman for eight years. Uh, we had committee meetings and, and a lot of times you thought that it was ready for prime time and, then, and another question appeared. It was upon the, you know, the committee chairs or whoever's running the meeting or the mayor to just acknowledge the fact that there's more questions out there than answers at that point in time and it should be laid over. So I think it's always the good to have good discussions, but um, if, we're, if we're leaning towards uh, conserving time on board meetings, where it needs to be had at as committees, caucus chair meetings, the joint caucuses, uh, and really make sure it's ready for prime time to be voted on. Um, you, you know, as a former alderman, I wanted to make sure that when I was ready to vote, I had a clear conscience on it, a total understanding of the, of the issue before me and make sure that others in that horseshoe also had the opportunity for that. So we all respected each other, unless there was time of the essence that usually was disclosed in advance when it came forward that this is an immediate time sensitive need. Paul is absolutely right. Sharina, you hit it right on the head. A lot of things were just laid over because it wasn't ready yet to be voted on. And everyone needs to feel comfortable at that moment, if possible. Mr. Schultz. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh I think you and I have talked about this offline before, but that that is largely a function of how the staff, the department heads, and the elected officials are trained because we have a history of having things brought by the individuals that are responsible for those things. Uh, the, they're brought to us at the last minute. And so the framework of, well, this is something we have to do now or we have to do tonight has been a frequent has been a frequent event in my time on the board. So I think if we reverse engineer what you're talking about so that the culture changes and we're not put in that position on such a frequent basis, that will allow for the technique that you're suggesting. And that is also my personal preference. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. 
So, um, and you know, it, it is, it's just a habit, how we've done business It take some time to uh, get out of the habit, but it, you know, just something to keep in mind. And it was asked to, that we uh, communicate it. Is there any other comment on that, Mr. Billich? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman there. Uh, I appreciate, I, I agree with everything that was said and, and definitely Steve said it very well right there at the end. Um, one thing that I would just encourage and advise many other board members to do is one of the things that a lot of people, they forget to do is, is reach out to the whatever committee chairman uh, that's dealing with that said business. They forget to reach out or, or they, you know, they can always reach out to the committee chairs and if they have any questions, ask those questions and get those questions answered. Um, I found that a lot of times when there was any concern, if I found out there was concern about something before I even it hit the county board level, uh, I was able to actually reach out and talk to a lot of people and answer those questions. Uh, one of the fine, uh, as former uh, member Dan Fellers, me and him had many conversations regarding different issues was because of the fact that, you know, sometimes he saw it one way, sometimes he saw it another way, and we were able to compromise on a a solid basis to where once we hit the meeting floor, there was no more questions to be asked. So uh, I would just encourage all board members, definitely reach out to your chairman or uh, committee chairs to, to get your questions answered. Thank you, Mr. Billich. Okay. Any other uh, comment on that issue? Okay. Last uh, thing to uh, idea that was brought up to help with the uh, flow of the board meeting was um, from Mr. Thompson um, asking about, if we could take non-controversial matters um, and put them on the cons consent agenda so that we're not voting on every single thing. Um, you know, sometimes like we'll do things that are procedural that we do, the, you know, every year. Um, and, uh, you know, that typically get a vote that's unanimous. So we'd put them on the consent agenda and then at the meeting, every board member would have the opportunity to remove an item from the consent agenda if they wanted it to be voted on separately. Um, now that decision to put it on the consent agenda, I think we talked about would be done by the committee chairs, um, maybe with the con committee's consent, you know, as we vote on something in committee, if it comes out unanimous, um, the committee members can decide to put it on the consent agenda. Um, it was a new idea to me I just said I'd share it, see what everyone thinks. Does anyone have any uh, opinion about that? I think that's a great idea. Thank you, Ms. Fellers. Mr. Kelly? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, we did do that on the Rockford School Board. And it worked out well, I assume? Okay. Mr. Schultz, you had your hand up? Yeah, as someone who I think has probably set a personal record over the last 12 plus years as being the only no vote on items, um, I'm very hesitant about this new approach. Uh, things that others have found to be non-controversial, I've not taken that same position on historically and quite a number of times. So I think there's an awful lot of power to whoever decides that it will go on the consent agenda and the, the tone and the tenor coming out of committee is not always the tone and tenor on the board floor. So that's, that's my input. Thanks. Okay. And um, just to keep in mind, if we were to do something like this, anyone would have the ability to take it off that consent agenda also. So um, Mr. McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I tend to agree with Mr. Schultz on that. Um, I think this, our caucuses have been much, much better as of lately. I really appreciate all the in-depth conversation we've had. I think our committee level discussions have gotten better. I think a sign of poor communication is when our county board meetings go long, because by the time we get to Thursday night, it's time for county board meeting. We should already know the facts. We should know everything behind there. There should be just a simple yes or no vote. There should, we shouldn't have to have that much discussion. That means you didn't do your homework. Um, so I, I kind of agree with uh, Mr. Schultz said I'd, I'd rather leave the things in committees where they were originally or currently are, I guess it would be. Um, just everybody needs to continue doing a good job or a better job even of doing homework before we get to uh, the county board night. All right. So now just so that everyone understands, everything would still go through the committee uh, process the exact same way. It would just be vote when we vote on the board floor, it would be by the consent agenda. And 
you know, I think if there's doubts in doing this, we should probably wait. I think what we could do first, if we try to uh, make sure that we're not suspending the rules, uh, send things back to committee or lay it over when there's still questions so we don't get into long debates. Once we're meeting um, in person, we won't have to have a roll call vote on non-controversial things. That'll help. So maybe we'll try, my suggestion would be try the first step of um, how we evaluate stuff leading up to the vote prior to going the consent agenda route. But um, does anyone else have a, anything they wanna weigh in on with it, another idea? Mr. Arena, Angie. <laughs> When I was new to the board and I would read, because we, we had notebooks at that time and we had all this stuff in our notebooks, and I would read over the consent agenda. If I had any question on what, what it was, because it's basically our expenses, and, if I, want, and I, if I questioned that, I just asked on the floor, got my answer, what it was, and that just went on for that. Because there's things that are on that consent agenda that many people don't understand why it's there or what it's for. And those are things that I believe it should be brought back to the finance committee anyway, should it not? Possibly. Um, okay. All right, well, is there any other conversation about that? Seeing none, we'll move on. Um, I have the invocation of pledge this week. Um, we have... Uh, Two appointments, or well, we have appointments to two boards. Both of them were laid over from the um, prior meeting, so they're up for a vote this time. Uh, Roger Allen uh, to uh, on the Otter Creek uh, Lake Utility District Board and uh, University of Illinois Extension Board, uh, Angie Goral, Aaron Booker, and Jim Webster, reappointments. Does anyone have any question, uh, Mr. McDonald? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Shirelli, I know Harlem Roscoe did have a, an appointment that was on here. I thought that was just laid over. Did we vote on that? And I apologize, and I'm embarrassed if we already did. The Harlem Roscoe Fire Protection District? Yeah, they had a trustee on here. I can't remember the gentleman's name, but I thought it was laid over the last time and we never took action. And forgive me if we did, but could you double check to make sure we did a, a reappoint that trustee? Absolutely. And if it's I think it was just laid over at the last meeting. Yeah. So now we switch to a 30 day layover on our appointment. Right. So it will be our, up on our next board meeting for a vote, I believe. Yeah. Oh, okay. Is that what I missed? Thank you. Right. Yeah. Cause we changed this, this term to a 30 day layover from a two week layover. Okay. Any other? I just, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Yeah. I just want everyone to know, you know, there's a lot of reappointments to boards because no action was taken by the past chairman for over a year to reappoint any of them. So I'm going through this whole process, vetting them to make sure they're interested, to sending the information to the caucus chairs and any interested county board member that's related to that entity. Um, so you're gonna be seeing a lot of reappoint reappointments coming forward. There's very few new appointments. Um, and, and so everyone knows that's why I'm doing it because I'm getting calls from these entities and these boards saying, you know, this gentleman, you know, has, hasn't been reappointed or this lady hasn't been reappointed. She's serving expired terms for over a year. We want some continuity to it. Um, so that's why we're going through this process. And there's a lot of boards for reappointment. So everybody knows. Because it wasn't, it wasn't happening in the last year and a half. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, if there's no other conversation about the appointments, we'll go to the standing committee reports. Finance, Mr. Salgado. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, the finance committee um, on our agenda has uh, three items. Um, two of them, three and four, their ordinances for the, the refinance of the bonds uh, series 2021A, 2021B. That will be discussed further in detail uh, this Thursday be before our um, county board meeting. So 
Uh, those are the dollar amounts that are currently out there um, that we're looking to refinance. Obviously, uh, we were looking to, um, what do you call it, uh, save, make some savings in there. Um, however, as you all are aware about our bond rating going from an A2 to A3, it's not significant, but uh, it undercuts our savings entirely. It's still worth um, the process of doing so right now, but those are topics that we will discuss and, um, and um, the finance committee will, with uh, Mr. Richter, will present that. And I'm, I'm assuming Spear Financial will probably be on hand as well to answer any of those questions. Um, so those are the two items there uh, that will be voted on at the county board. But prior to that, we'll have a finance committee meeting on that. Um, the the uh, item two resolution regarding House Bill 2804 is voted on committee um, to essentially have uh, the county board be on the health board as well, um, representation. Um, Mr. Arena can speak to it if he'd like to address it uh, or bring more, shed some light into it. Uh, but essentially we are proposing, you know, on ensuring that our, you know, we have representation on those health boards. Um, it is part of our function and it should be part of our function. So that's what uh, that resolution is regarding to. It was a joint with operations as well. Um, so that will be voted on as well on, on Thursday. So I don't know if you want to touch in anything, Mr. Arena, on that house bill. Um, and then I, I got one more thing after that. Sure. Um, so what this bill said is that it would have prohibited a member of the county board from serving on the board of health. And um, it was brought to our attention by the, uh, the Associ Illinois Association of Counties um, and uh, Ms. Gorl, um, brought it to my attention. She's our representative on the Board of Health um, and was opposed to it. This is a resolution say, say we oppose the bill that would prohibit us from being on the board. Uh, Dr. Martell also supported that we oppose it. So um, everyone seemed to be in agreement. Um, was there any questions about it? Okay, I see none. Go ahead, Mr. Salgado, with your next uh, item. Yes, thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Um, the other items that were covered in finance, this is just to give more information for everyone that wasn't able to attend. Um, I know that sometimes I'm unable to attend some of these committee meetings during Zoom, uh, even though uh, it's uh, readily available. So uh, one of the things was one of the topics that we just talked about um, before uh, the resolution that Mr. Arena kind of alluded to and gave more detail was obviously the Moody's rating. Um, we were downgraded from A2 to A3 based on our reserves. Um, so that's a critical piece of our in, um, piece of the pie, essentially in our cash flow with uh, our nursing home out there. So discussions were being uh, held at that. Mr. Richter, our CFO, uh, presented some uh, recommendations uh, potentially to get us back into that direction to, um, you know, increase our reserves um, since, you know, it is a, a process that uh, we get rated on on that. So uh, more to come on that, but just wanted to give an update on that as well as we had discussions as from uh, new business from our prior um, uh, board meeting uh, that Mr. Schultz brought up regarding uh, River Bluff Nursing Home. Uh, for those that were in, uh, weren't in attendance, we talked with, with Pat and I believe Mark out there, accounts receivables and, and stuff like that and trying to get our nursing home in that direction. Uh, there were some questions about, you know, um, you know, three topics, three recommendations, potentially looking at, you know, what do we do? How do we increase our operating uh, revenue? Um, make it better? Um, do we outsource it? Or can we, you know, if it doesn't make business sense, uh, what do we do with the, the River Bluff nursing home? So those are th things still being looked at. Um, but I can tell you that uh, those are good conversations to have, not only that, but having that projection um, by Mr. Butita, Mr. Schultz, uh, you know, uh, projecting out five years, trying to figure out you know, do we have a viable uh, solution to maintain 
uh, River Bluff Nursing Home. We understand it's a great need in our community. And it's, uh, I think from my perspective and many others, it's a good thing for our communities and uh, for the taxpayers as well. Um, but we need to look into detail, how do we get solve the issue that we our cash flow issue that we have there. So I just wanted to bring that uh, for those that weren't able to. And then one last thing, a comment that I have, and it's very, uh, you know, about, uh, you know, suspending the rules. Um, you know, I, I like the process of laying it over, whatever the case may be, if we feel uncomfortable uh, moving forward. But like uh, a couple of the board members said, we have opportunities at caucus, and to have those discussions like we are doing now um, to get our answers as well, reach out to your uh, chair individuals of those committees. Um, but uh, from my perspective, there are opportunities to be involved in the process to get the questions answered. I can tell you that uh, we, we went through caucus and through committee was voted unanimously on that. And so, um, you know, from my perspective, you know, we have opportunities to ask those questions. Uh, sometimes we don't have them available because the information is not provided to us at that committee meeting. So if we can get the information prior to and we review it, I'm pretty sure, as Mr. McDonald has said, you know, we should be able to do our homework and actually have questions at those meetings to get those questions answered. So we're not on, you know, county board um, asking those questions or debating if there aren't our questions on that. So um, other than that, that's the finance committee. I don't know if anybody has any questions regarding the items that I discussed. Is there any uh, discussion on the finance report? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Thank you, Mr. Salgado. Zoning, Mr. Webster. Uh, okay, hang on a second. All right. Um, yeah, we have a zoning committee meeting this Wednesday, um, and we have uh, four items on there. Three of them are with the same applicant. Anyways, I will be reading these in uh, for a first reading uh, at Thursday's meeting, and of course, they will lay over, uh, be voted on. Uh, just for general information, the Zoning Board of Appeals pro approved both of them or all of them unanimously, uh, but we'll see what happens what comes out of committee. And so in the meantime, the minutes of the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting are online. You can read those minutes to see how they arrived at their decisions, uh, the discussion that took place there, uh, which was a good healthy discussion once again. Um, and so furthermore, uh, for my committee meetings now, for our zoning committee meetings, um, we will be having our meetings once again at 4.30, they're Zoom meetings, and we will continue that way until uh, the governor opens things up there, and then we'll, we will go back to live meetings at that point at five o'clock. So anybody wants to sit in on our meetings, 4.30 Wednesday, um, you're welcome to sign in. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Webb. Is there any question or comment on the zoning report? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, Economic Development Committee, Mr. Billich. Thank you, Chairman. Um, yeah, for this week, we actually only have two items up, and that would be the first one is actually the approval of a grant of $20,000. Now, this is $20,000 that we've already given to the RACVB for two other events. But we had added a stipulation that if those had those events not occurred, obviously due to COVID reasons or whatever else it may be, or they didn't win the bid on those events, that uh, that money would come back to the county. Well, they had another event. It was the WNIT event uh, last minute that happened that they were that we were successfully able to uh, win that uh, tournament, and it brought a lot of business to the area. Uh, according to their uh, demographics and every and their reports, it was up to about 500 people total just between the teams alone uh, that had uh, set up deals with the hotels locally here and obviously brought a lot of business, tourism business uh, to the area. So they actually re-asked for the $20,000 to be able to cover the events um, 
that uh, that was approved unanimously by the committee. Uh, and from my understanding, the the event was a very successful and, and, and good event that they held. Uh, the second matter of business that we have is actually uh, the approval of the uh, cooperation in the recycling of uh, televisions and uh, electronics with KNIB, Keep Northern Illinois Beautiful. Um, as many of you know, this is uh, basically something that we have to vote on every year to continue that partnership. And through that partnership, obviously, that saves the county uh, quite a bit of money. It does. Obviously, there is an, uh, an amount with it that, that entails it to, to make sure that we're part of that partnership. But the amount that we pitch in for the recycling of those TVs and being partnered with the KNIB on this one is actually less costly than what it would have cost for the county to have to set up their own uh, uh, employed positions to be able to do that. So uh, that also passed unanimously as well. Uh, that was all the business that we had for economic development. Okay, Mr. McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do have a quick question about that uh, Illinois recycling program. Uh, I did just three weeks ago take a, t a television and get recycled. It cost $20. I, I know we've done this for a couple of years now. I thought that was the intent uh, of us kicking in so it didn't cost people to send them in. So they kept them out of landfills and they kept them out of dumpsters. Uh, did, did everybody here understand that there is still a fee to drop off a TV? I, I did. <laughs> and I don't think yeah. that this program works. Um, I find TVs all over the place. They're in, the, they're on the street, you know. So I understand it's a difficult situation, but I don't think that the program we have put together is adequately meeting the community needs. So no, um, I find them abandoned everywhere. But, that was the um, point of my my comment. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That I thought we were taking care of this so that we wouldn't find these in the places they were not supposed to be in. And you know, I'm happy to pay what I can to get the TVs recycled. But I know there's many other people that just forget it. I'm not going to spend the 20 bucks. I'll discard it some other way. If, if that's something that's of a concern, then I will definitely bring it up um, with Pam uh, over at KNIB. Uh, we can definitely continue that conversation on. Uh, one of the reasons why we've passed this over the years so far as well is because it puts the, the, the process of doing this would fall on our backs if we don't, if we didn't partner with KNIB. And staffing wise and what it would cost us, it would actually have to go through the highway department. If I remember correctly, that's what it formerly used to go through. Um, and the expense uh, was basically, uh, it, it's a smaller expense if we do it through the partnership with KNIB than if we would have to do it through our own uh, labor services uh, through the, the, the uh, highway department. Mr. Billich, do you know how much we spend a year to be in part of the program? I believe for this one, I don't have it right now. I'm currently in my car, but otherwise I would uh, say, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, it should be around the neighborhood of 40,000, but I will actually forward on more information uh, after this meeting. Okay. May I ask a question? Go ahead, Ms. Girl. Well, first of all, I've used that service before, and I find that, that the televisions that are kind of put on the curb all over town or people are moving and don't want to take them or it's it's uh, landlords who are sticking them out there. And where I live, I, I run into a lot of that. A lot, perhaps many times, uh, landlords don't inform their, their um, tenants that those things need to be go out to keep out to the um, recycle place. I personally, on my rental, have had to take them out there and uh, I get very upset, especially the great big screen ones I, I, I see every now and then. But I also look at the properties they're in front of, and you'll find that a lot of that is in um, areas that have probably 80% rentals that you're going to find this. But we also need to, uh, and, and our, probably our electric bills to homeowners or the water bill, put something in there that this is available to them and the cost to bring in the, the uh, uh, TVs out there. Does this cover us too with the county, all the televisions that, not television, but, but with the um, screens that we have to get rid of, with our computer systems that we have to get rid of? How do we get rid of those? Uh, you're correct there, Ms. Borrell. It actually is through KNIB. Uh, they've actually handled 
uh, all of our screens and, and any kind of recyclables that we have as far as screen related recyclables, uh, whether it be the t televisions or the uh, computer screens, we've always uh, brought it over to them through this partnership, as well as uh, the city of Rockford does. And I believe city of Los Park as well, especially now currently with KNIB having a second location in the Love Park area. Very good. Because, you know, I wish we could be responsible for everyone, but we can't. There's always those who are going to put them on the street, just like tires. Tires is another thing. If you go around and thank God, the um, Winnebago County Highway Department a couple times a year, the health department also a couple times a year try to get people to go out and get rid of old tires instead of throwing them on, like right, right now I'm looking at that, at, um, Horseman Street Quarry behind me. If you go over there, you even find mattresses sitting over there where people are too, just don't know how to get rid of them and they just throw them any place they want to do it. So you're still going to find those spots all over town no matter what you do. But the majority of them are going out to them at um, uh, Keep Down Northern Illinois Beautiful. And I, I just really appreciate them. And I'm willing to pay the price just to get rid of this stuff. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Girl. Is there any other conversation on that subject? Uh, I just wanted to add one other thing is, is through that, uh, there are certain standards that we have to, that have to be met that are by law. And that's why it would, if it wasn't for them, then it would fall onto our back. Uh, so as far as if there is any concern or any uh, specific areas that you'd like me to address in a conversation with them, I would be more than happy to do that. Uh, currently I'm actually working with discussion with them on uh, trying to, locate and figure out a process to possibly open another location over on the western uh west side of town uh to make it a little bit easier for that as well so hopefully we can continue on and and maybe help them grow in that process they are non for profit very limited amount of employees that they can afford to have uh so they do work with what they got they also do have a very large uh volunteer base uh, that they work with so okay. mr village when Mr. Tassoni and I were both uh, had the same district, when there were two of us on a district, I think Mr. Tassoni will also vouch for the, pro the problem that the West Side people were having not being able to get rid of their things and wondered why I Keep Northern Illinois Beautiful didn't bring some type of a dumpster over there, especially in April when they do the big cleanups. So there is a big need on the West Side, and that's not just city because we bound county on the west side. And those people also would like to be able to deposit these things when they, when they have these, these fundraisers, when they, uh, they have these pickups. So it's something to think about and pass that on. Would you please? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And like I said, because they don't have a location on the west side, um, but per law, when they do these programs, they're supposed to have um, added locations. So what they do is actually they have a, um, deal where they are able to run a program uh, where they have certain specific days that they're going to be out at the farm and fleet over on West State Street. And usually for that event, it's a huge line of uh, cars that come over and, and uh, uh, recycle their TVs through them. But since they're not, they don't have it within their capabilities to afford a location over there quite yet, they're working on it. Uh, that's something that's still in the works. And that's something that we're trying to encourage them in, in, in a heavier way. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Girl. Thank you, Mr. Billich. Um, moving on then, operations and administrative. Uh, Mr. McDonald, do you have any comment you'd like to make? We have no report this evening. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, Public Works, Mr. Sony. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Public Works Committee has uh, three items for this uh, week's meeting. Uh, the first item would be 21-005. Uh, and basically, it's uh, it's a, a two-year cost of thirty-nine thousand nine hundred dollars, with uh, an option for a, a third-year extension. And this is uh, for mowing and weed control, um, various parkways out like uh, the one that comes to mind is like out on Perryville Road and and mostly turf grass areas. This doesn't include the mowing of ditches and right-of-ways out in the rural parts, but it's just for uh, things that are you know kept mowed on a weekly or bi-weekly basis. Uh, it's a local company. Um, uh, next item is a uh, 21-007. It's a resolution appropriating the MFT funds for the maintenance of, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped one. Go back to 21-006. It's an award of bid 
for the 2021 general letting a million uh one million sixty six thousand this covers uh, a lot of culvert pipe and items that uh, the county uses throughout the year it's an annual uh, annual thing uh, the third item is 21-007 it's a resolution authorizing the appropriation of the mft funds and uh, this five million two hundred thirty four thousand covers uh, um, salaries, equipment, and other items. Uh, and this is an annual uh, basis as well. And both, uh, all, all of those were budgeted items. Thank you, Mr. Tassoni. Are there any questions for Mr. Tassoni? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to public safety and judicial. Mr. Girl. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Public Safety has three resolutions for Thursday. The first is the approval of in-house position of Winnebago County Criminal Justice Council Administrator. Uh, second resolution is for the approval of intergovernment, intergovernmental agreement for South Lloyd High School for a school resource officer. And the third is a resolution authorizing the county board chairman and amend the contract for telecommunication services for inmates of the Winnebago County Jail. Now, I'll just touch on number three here real quick. Um, this is a contract to renew tablets and to replace existing video conferencing um, uh, equipment software in the jail that is at the end of life. It's been installed since the jail was built. This is conferencing that allows uh, inmates to um, conference with lawyers, judges, and uh, general members of the public, family, whatever. So with this contract, um, it would cover all the video conferencing equipment, actually saving the county about $500,000. It's a three-year contract. After the second year, the video conferencing, the county will actually start making money on video conferencing. So it's basically something that we've never done before. So I'll give kudos to Ann Johns and to the uh, uh, Sheriff's Department for actually researching this and finding a great solution to uh, a problem. Uh, I think you know. for everyone else. Uh, okay, there, you froze up there, Mr. Girl, for me anyway, I assume. For but you had, last thing I heard you say is it was Ann Johns had done a great job. Yeah, sorry, I'll stop my video. I, I'm having a problem here on Zoom. So yeah, um, the jail contract or with the tablets and the video conferencing, I'm not sure where I caught out of, but uh, so we're Ann saying- Johns. That yep. Ann Johns did a good job. Yeah, so they researched this and found that our tablet folks who provide the tablet already in the jail can also do video conferencing. So they'll replace the equipment and actually in two years, we'll start making some money. It won't be a lot, but it'll go into the commentary. So and that will build that fund up. Okay. There, um, if I may, Ms. Serena. Uh, yes, please go ahead, Mr. Sagato. Yeah, hey, Bert. Um, yep. Is there a cost associated with that? Nope, no cost. No cost to us? All right. Nope. Uh, the contract uh, is basically we're renewing that initial contract that we had for the tablets, and this will be a three-year contract. So they negotiated in that to the for the video conferencing as well. Okay. Thank you. Yep. McDonald. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Hey, Bert, is, uh, originally they had a guaranteed annual income on the revenue. Is that still in there? It is still in there, yes, and we're far exceeding that. I believe it's eight nine hundred thousand per year uh, guaranteed. I believe off the top of my head, but we have exceeded that um, almost every year. Did the telephone rates change at all? Not to my knowledge, but I will check. Okay. Um, then uh, the um, CJC CJCC administrator. We had, I believe, already approved the financial part of it. Was there any other concerns about this one? I know this caused some confusion, so I thought maybe we could ask those questions here. Um, sure. Any? Yep. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Marlena Dockin was there from R1, who will be our administrator, um, who is moving over to the county uh, 
administration building. Uh, she answered a lot of questions. There was concern from Ms. Red about diversity. Uh, right now, she is the only employee. They're looking, well, she is the only administrator right now. So um, that will be definitely something that they're going to take in consideration moving forward along in the future is diversity and making sure that this council makes up the uh, folks that they represent through the criminal justice system. So that was one of the uh, um, things that was brought up uh, and just her role and everything and how she does this. Uh, she's been doing this for R1 uh, through a few different programs through grants. Um, so this will be moving from a grant basically into a position. But those grants will continue to be applied for and the administration fees for those grants will, um, we believe, more than offset the cost of the position. Absolutely, yes, sir. Okay. Well, uh, Ms. Arena, if I may. Sure, please go ahead, Mr. Uh, along those same lines, Bert, uh, did, uh, I know you talked about her role and stuff like that. Has there been any structurally what her position's going to uh, be doing? Um, and it, or is there some information on that? Just out of curiosity, I'm not asking, you know, to actually divulge in the day-to-day -day operations, but just uh, get a sense and an overview of what the process is gonna be uh, in-house through the Winnebago County. Yep, so her role is basically gonna be to coordinate um, criminal justice activities through the courts, um, through the state, and through the county, and to follow up um, with individuals within inside the county um, criminal justice center. And uh, we will, have her there for Thursday if there is questions that I can't answer. And um, she went into a lot of things there. So I'm sorry if I can't remember everything, but she did explain her role there. Um, and I will make sure that she is there Thursday to answer questions, Mr. Salgado, because I apologize. I don't remember exactly everything she said. Yeah, not a problem. It's just, I just wanted to get a, a sense and idea. I know that we could also serve a, a liaison between the Fem Family Peace Center with the court system. I know with our old Judge Collins, um, you know, uh, aspect of it. So uh, there's a lot of potential I see in this position. So I'm just uh, excited that it's going to be in Winnebago County and we can address some of those things that are kind of currently changing throughout, you know, with legislation and across our nation as well. State yes, and, and this will give the county actually a, a hand into how criminal justice reform operates at the county level. Uh, this was through the state and through the feds, through the state, I'm sorry. And the state put it onto the counties to have a better role and a better understanding of exactly how and um, how criminal justice is administrated in their county because the state believed that counties um, had the best knowledge uh, hand on experience as far as the criminal justice uh, network in their county. So I'm excited. Uh, Ms. Dawkins excited. Um, so we look forward to this relationship and uh, I look forward to bringing her in quarterly, if not more often to kind of give us updates. And she is very up to date on uh, all the legislation surrounding the criminal justice reform act and everything else. So uh, I think she's a great person to have in this role. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Can I, yep. can I jump in on this? If I remember correctly, Bert, did she not say that the city of Rockford is also uh, putting in uh, X amount of dollars into this? They are, and I believe that number is 20,000, I believe. Yes, it, she was with the uh, sheriff's department prior to moving it all to R1. And now they're taking it out of R1. Even the city has pulled out and the city will be um, part of this, uh, not as much as expense as we do, but it will help to pay her salary. And um, I was just astounded at what all she has to do. And I do hope you do get her to come to our board meeting so she can explain it to everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Booker. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, I'd just like to remind remind everyone that uh, Ms. Duncan is very articulate. She's very knowledgeable of the job. And I think uh, her teaming with uh, Tommy Meeks 
uh, in our, uh, um, you know, recidivism, uh, reducing recidivism. And uh, we've got two excellent people in the right positions right now uh, for this type of program. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Booker. Are there any other comments or questions? Mr. Webster. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just reflecting back to our last board meeting there where uh, we had Brett from Animal Services come and uh, there was lengthy discussion there about uh, the wants and needs uh, from him and his department. Uh, so I'm just listening to this now and I'm hearing that we're gonna have a person come in um, to sit down and explain to us about their wants and needs once again, which are important, of course. Um, but is this gonna be another evening there where people are gonna have, you know, thousand questions again, that this person can't answer. And then are we gonna go through the same uh, exercise about saying we need to vote on this tonight, or maybe we should send it back to committee for more questions or should we lay it over? Uh, I'm just rolling this around in my head as how this is gonna play out. Thank you. Well, thank you, Mr. Webster. And that's an excellent point. Um, um, I have a question. Uh, sh sure, go ahead, Ms. Red. Well, I guess it's, maybe it's not a question, but um, I'm concerned how will the um, youth fit into this? I know Mr. Uh, Leeks is helping with the uh, recidivism for the adults. Is there a piece for the youth at all? Well, so it's my understanding, I listened to the, the committee meeting and uh, Ms. Dokin, Dokin, you know, she's been living this for a while. So she really, you know, is best suited to answer these questions. But this position is a person to act as a liaison between the different parts of the criminal justice system. So she helps just kind of, as the name says, coordinate, you know, what the courts are doing with what parole's doing with what's happening at the jail. You know, she's, she's um, like an extra body to help blend the two, all the different branches of the cr criminal justice system. So whatever services we are providing for youths, right, she would be touching that also as needed, but it's not um, a sole duty of the this position. Did I explain that correctly, Chairman Shirelli? Yes, you did. Um, just quickly, Chairman. Um, by creating this position and moving it from R1 PC here, it's clear to me that, you know, we are funding her at $20,000 a year the city's funding her at $10,000 a year for that position. And just the discussion alone is wonderful here, but we've been funding, the county has been funding and me as an alderman was funding. I had no idea what the criminal justice coordinating council was. All I can tell you is this, the questions that Ms. Red is having and everyone's having, you will find better accessibility with this coordinator than you've ever had. It's gonna be open door from her. Whatever policies we want to enact to better our policies within the county. She so if you look at it like this, unfunded mandates come down from the state to our local jurisdiction. With this coordinating council, you have the ability to have this coordinator study these issues, create policies according to what the county board wants, because we are the criminal justice system in the county, and then send it back up to our legislators to speak on our behalf. She is an invaluable tool for us in the criminal justice system. And as far as a direct question for Ms. Fed, that's a great question. You know, Tommy Meeks with the Rick Center, that is a hidden gem that has not been exploited throughout the state of Illinois. And with this position, we are going to be able to exploit the great work that he's doing and increase the work he's doing for, for the youth that are in trouble. We have the opportunity right now to be able to direct Ms. Dockin when she becomes an employee of what this county board and how they want to view the criminal justice system. Bring it to the council members, which is the sheriff, the chief judge, the state's attorney, uh, myself, Tom McNamara in the city of Rockford, and bring forward these initiatives and issues that are dearly needed 
right now, who can honestly say they've heard about you know, Marlena Dockin and the Criminal Justice Coordinating Council, Council, and we've been funding it in the county for the past two and a half years. You had no exposure to her. You had no ability to reach her because it was you were not aware of it. Now the awareness and the light's going to be on that office. So everybody has the opportunity to bring forward initiatives and good policy that you want to see this county take. I have been very passionate about this because during this whole pandemic, everyone's asking, what is the Winnebago County doing for criminal justice? We have the opportunity now. We can set our destiny and set the course to help all people with this position. And she is more than capable of handling this. And uh, going forward, when we talk about diversity, we need to make sure that that coordinating council Marlena Dockin is just the coordinator for the council. We need our voice heard and by having her aboard as a county uh, employee. I feel we are 100% gonna have our voice heard now through this county board. So I'm very happy and you know, the, the ball is on our court. If we wanna take the ball by the reins and say we are the criminal justice system and we wanna make sure that our voices are heard in Springfield with criminal justice, this is the opportunity we have. And as far as her employment and her compensation, very little of what the county puts in goes to her salary. Where her benefit is, is those grants that she brings forward through the initiatives that we wanna work on more than will pay for her salary here. And the ability for this county to really become a major player with criminal justice. I hope everybody, it's very confusing because nobody had even heard about what they do. So hopefully it uh, answers some of those questions, uh, but we really need to uh, take a position for better accessibility, better policy and better communication with the chief judge, the sheriff, the state's attorney, and everybody that's involved with criminal justice. We have this opportunity now as a county board to do that. Thank you, Chairman Torelli. And um, to touch on Mr. Webster's point about, you know, would this become, um, you know, a similar conversation like we had last meeting, um, Ms. Dawkins accessible now. So if you have a lot of questions or reservations about this, I suggest you reach out to Chairman Torelli over the next couple of days. He'll put you in touch with Ms. Dawkins directly. You can ask her, um, you know, straight from her, uh, you know, what she does, how it touches on the particular uh, concerns you might have. And that'll probably help um, facilitate the conversation during the board meeting. And also, Mr. Chairman, you know, time is not of essence here, but I believe it's prudent to get our questions answered um, in this timely manner. She is more than willing to talk to everybody about what she's been doing or where we think we need to be going with this position. And I, I applaud everybody. If you have questions, please bring them forward. Um, nobody's gonna be uh, under pressure to do anything. This is gonna be a long-term sustainable program for Winnebago County and the criminal justice system. And so everybody also knows the Criminal Justice, justice Coordinating Council unanimously voted for this lateral move over here. Her role is not changing, it's just moving from our one PC to Winnebago County as an employee. So we can control the destiny of the criminal justice system in our county. Thank you, Chairman Shirelli. Mr. Schultz. Yeah, just hearing the comments about the uh, expectations around this position just reminds me of a larger issue that I think we should at least take note of. And that's when we do something that is, uh, is, doesn't have clarity as far as definition and history, uh, where we have the facts uh, about the details, just as Mr. Chiarelli pointed out on this position, there's a lot of ignorance around, you know, including with myself, as far as what they do, what the value is, um, and and here we're hearing you know effusive statements about you know this is the best thing ever. I do think it's wise when we do these kinds of things to then have a demarcation line a year later, at some point later, where there's a report that comes back 
uh, because often we're making decisions based on the promise, but then we don't actually hear back. And, and you can go to the committee that, that, you know, the public safety committee makes sense. It would go there, but at least in some venue to, to have that reporting, uh, I think is valuable. And it, and, it, and it ensures that there's accountability for expectations that are created. And it also just is informative to the county board members. Thank you, Mr. Schultz. Okay, is there any, um, Chairman Shirelli? Yeah, just quickly, and I appreciate those comments from Mr. Schultz, but as Mr. Gurl said, <clears throat> the Public Safety and Judiciary Committee needs to make sure that Marlena Dockin is in front of them quarterly, because this is an immense undertaking as far as criminal justice. And if we're really gonna see the value of our, our own committees, we need to make sure that the committee chairs and the committee members fully understand the importance of criminal justice in our community. So I'm sure Mr. Girl is very excited as I am because this has not occurred before. And to hold her accountable, we're absolutely gonna hold her accountable because that's what we're gonna be doing. We're not doing business as, as we did in the past. This is a new day. And we're going to make sure that there's full transparency in the, in the truest sense of the word, not just a word, the truest sense of the word. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, are there any other comments on the public safety report? Uh, seeing none, I think um, any other items for uh, unfinished business or new business that somebody wants to bring up now? Okay, I guess with that, uh, Mr. Hoffman, did you have anything that you wanted to add? No, I, I don't, you covered it all. Okay, thank you. Okay, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. <laughs> By many, <laughs> all right, <laughs> a second, I think we got that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Aye. Everyone have a pleasant evening. We'll see you on uh, Thursday. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Okay. Bye. I was on mute. I couldn't.